Hi friends, welcome to the Spirituality and Energy Education podcast. So I wanted to start this podcast because I feel that this domain of knowledge is very essential moving forward because right now, as we all probably know, the world is in a pretty shaky place and a lot of it is the result of the degradation of human nature, i.e. a decline in humanity's spirituality. And of course, the inspiration for starting this podcast was because I personally have been pretty interested in this topic, you know, almost all my life. And especially in recent years, after getting to know a spiritual teacher, which I will share my story later on, I've been just naturally sharing about a lot of a lot of content about energy and spirituality. And so many people around me and friends from online, they are very curious to learn more. And they have always asked me, hey, you know, does your spiritual teacher conduct classes about all these topics? Because I'd love to learn more. So I thought well, I could do that and I could also share some of the things that I learned in the English format, of course, because my spiritual teacher speaks mainly only Mandarin. So share in a podcast format so that and segregated based on topics so that uh, you guys can actually consume it. Yeah. So for this first episode, I would just like to share my story of how I got to know my spiritual teacher, which is a very common question that I get especially in recent months, I've been posting a lot more about my encounters with her. And many friends online, offline, they have asked me, how did I get to know this spiritual teacher? So let me share a little bit of background about myself. So I've been pretty interested in the topics of spirituality since a young age. Um, how it started was, I was brought up in a Buddhist family. Uh, my parents, you can consider them pretty peers. But of course, most importantly, they guided me and my sibling, my younger brother, um, traditional Asian values and values that are grounded on Buddhist principles, which are to me life philosophies, things like kindness, compassion, being grateful, stuff like that. So growing up, I was what you can call a good boy. So what happened was that one fine day when I was in kindergarten, that was about five years old, you know, I don't know why the thought occurred to me, but somehow just that day, a random thought occurred to me that, hey, one day my parents are going to die, you know, and so I started to, that day I just, a sadness just overcame me. And I don't know why I had that random thought, you know. But the thought of how life is so impermanent and that one day I'll lose my parents just got me feeling really sad. And that kind of triggered me to want to find out more about the afterlife. Because in Buddhism, we have this concept of reincarnation and stuff like that, right? So of course, another more childish thought was that I was born a guy, right? So I was, and I've also heard and seen the pains of childbirth. So it's like an innocent thought that, hey, you know, uh, I don't want to reincarnate and be a woman in another life because I don't want to go through the pain. But that was, of course, a childish thinking back then. So always curious about how to break this cycle of, you know, reincarnation, having to go through another next life where I might be in a, you know, worse off place or whatsoever. So that's where in Buddhism, we have this concept of how do you stop this reincarnation cycle, right? How do you liberate yourself from it? And that's what got me to read a lot of you know, books about Buddhism, because I was from a Buddhist family, right? That was like my first source of reference and Buddha stories. And from there, of course, I got exposed to his teachings, which gave me quite a bit of spiritual foundation, life values foundation. So I, I quickly, I very quickly realized that what Buddha talked about was really philosophies of life. I didn't see it as like a quote unquote religion. To me, it's all common sense, right? It's just how to be a better person. Yeah, and of course, one of the things that he talked about was how to achieve enlightenment. You know, we got to detach ourselves and not have desires. Of course, that was what the book um, wrote back then. And so I interpreted it literally. So of course, as I'm more advanced in the spirituality right now, I have learned and I have a different understanding of what Buddha actually meant by having detachment and no desires, which I'll talk about it maybe later, maybe in, in another episode. That was me when I was young. And of course, in general... I picked up the habit of reading when I was younger and so I like to read a lot of like self-help books, you know, books about the life stories of successful people and so I had a lot of all these self-help content which built the foundation of my mindset, right? So I saw a, a parallel between self-help content by the authors that you know, Napoleon Hill, so and so forth, and of course, spiritual books, religious books. To me, these are all life lessons. So we reached a stage whereby I was in my early 20s, late 10s, early 20s, where maybe maybe not even that late, perhaps just um, halfway into school, 
I just temporarily threw that thought out of my window because I felt that, hey, you know, we are living in this practical world, we have to earn money, we have to study hard whatsoever. How do you detach yourself? It's not possible, right, unless you be a monk and stuff like that. So I quickly just chucked this whole, you can call it information I had at the back of my head and just lived the so-called normal practical life, striving to make money and whatsoever. And I, at that point in time, I remember there was one point where I felt that, hey, are all these spiritual teachings and practical life, having to earn money, becoming successful whatsoever, two separate things? So there was one point where I had that question in mind. And long story short, eventually when I met my spiritual teacher in 2018, and I've learned more things from her, I started to see how actually both of these paths were combined. How spiritual cultivation, achieving enlightenment whatsoever, reaching a, a height in spirituality, comes hand in hand with striving for material success, earning more money, striving to become successful in our own ways. And so everything made sense to me. Yeah. So now instead of seeing it as either or, I see it as both. So coming to the story of how I got to know my spiritual teacher. So I started out my very first career in tech sales. So back then I was probably about in my early 20s. Mm, 21 years old, I kind of started. It was a tech startup, I joined them. Um, 22 years old, which was around the 23 years old, 2018, was when I first met my spiritual teacher. Because at that point in time, my tech company at that point in time was going through a very critical phase of growth. So that's where one fine day, the boss, he decided to invite her to do like, he calls it an energy cleansing session. So all the while, I've been pretty open to all these um, spiritual topics. So the energy cleansing session is actually one of uh, Master Lucia's in a way, signature programs, one that she holds pretty often um, because its price point is not very high as well. And it's basically a negative energy detox program where all of us, we are made up of energy. That's firstly, you know, the whole entire universe, physics has really explained and proven that everything is made up of energy. So including me and you, including the end, including our wallet, tables and chairs, the base unit, are energies. Okay, just like how scientists, they break us down into our atoms and then they try to break the atom down into smaller parts, they discover electrons whatsoever that's even smaller, smaller, smaller. The base layer is energy, right? Or in another energy, think of it as um, the softwares, the online stuff that you're using, okay? When we use an app, what we're experiencing is the top layer, the interface, the user interface. But at the very bottom layer is the string of zero and ones. Right? So when you alter this string and sequence of zero and ones, then you fundamentally alter how the topmost layer performs. So likewise, everything in this universe is made up of energy. And so when you alter someone's energy state, you can fundamentally change how this person operates on the topmost level, which is what we see, the outer manifestation of a person, their abilities, their charisma, all sorts of things. So. As beings who are made up of energy, we definitely are comprised of positive energy and negative energy. So all of us are bound to have negative energies within us. So this particular negative energy detox course is where, okay, sorry, firstly, a bit of introduction about this spiritual teacher. So I uh, eventually got to know that she was born with this unique gift of being able to see energy and move energy fields. So like I said earlier, everything is made up of energy. And within all forms of energy contains certain information, just like how radio waves are a form of energy. And the radio waves carry with it the information that's transmitted from the satellite to the radio, and then the radio transcribe this energy wave into sounds that we can hear, and so receive this information. So likewise, in our energy field as a person contains information about us, our past, our present, our future, whatsoever. Again, very similar, DNA is a form of energy as well. Our genes are a form of energy as well. Our genes contain information about us. It determines our hair color, our eye colors, whatsoever. So likewise, this energy field of ours contains information about us. So by being able to see energy, one of the basic things that Master Lu does is that she can predict a person's past, present, future. And so help people with life planning and stuff like that. And not only can she see, but she can also move these energy fields. So how does she apply it to the negative energy detox course is that she's able to move negative energies out of a person, right? So some examples of negative energy, firstly, people with mental health issues, a lot of times from an energy point of view, these are negative energies 
that is buried deep in their head, right? So in order for them to become better, you need to remove these negative energies from their head, their conscious mind and their subconscious mind, and that's where they'll become better. On a physical level, you talk about things like very common diseases in modern city living, heart diseases, cancer. Cancers usually a result of, you know, there's cancerous tumors. So all these are manifestations of negative energy, right? So negative energy are basically lower energy states. So think of it as water, where water is of a very is at a very low temperature, aka low energy, it solidifies and becomes solid, the solid state. When it's at a higher energy state, aka more heat energy, it, be, it becomes vapor, it becomes more intangible. So likewise, when there's too much negative energy built up in our body, all this energy forms solid substances, and these becomes your substances that clog our arteries, causing heart attacks. These substances become your tumors. So when we cleanse the negative energies from our bodies, it also has the effect of cleansing all these toxins from our bodies. So this negative energy detox course serves as one of the programs where we conduct it every now and then, because every now and then people accumulate up to a certain level of negative energies and they always need to clear it consistently. So that it's like prevention is better than cure. So another analogy of how this negative energy detox program works is that we are like a cup, we are a vessel. Within this vessel contains, in the cup's analogy, water, stains. Okay? Within our vessel contains energy. Our predominant energy mix-up determines how we are like as a person, how we perform as a person. So, just like a cup, these negative energies are like stains in a cup. Positive energy is like the plain water. So, if your cup is tainted, and no matter how much clean water you pour into it, the drink is still going to be tainted, right? So what you need to do is you need to first wash clean the cup before you pour the pure drinking water so that it becomes drinkable. Likewise, before adding in positive energy, we also need to clear the negative energies from our bodies first. So this negative energy detox course was split into two parts. First part is cleansing of our vessel, cleansing of us from negative energy. And second part is refilling it with positive energies. So the program that my boss back then introduced to us, or rather got us to attend, he paid for it. And it was just an abridged version of the full negative energy detox course that sometimes lasts a full day or even two days. But this particular one, it was just like a couple of hours. So I remember the first part, which was the negative energy cleansing part, we were all sitting down. It was a session where we were all sitting down. We were all told to wear white. Okay, sitting down, there was a special background music playing, lights were dimmed, the teacher was doing her stuff, moving the energy fields. And there were a few moments where she said in Mandarin, Chu Nang Liang, Chu Lai Ba, you know, which which means translated in English is negative energy, come out. You know, of course she said it in a much more resonating way. I I, I can't make, make that, you know. And the moment she does that, I heard people in the room starting to puke, starting to tear, starting to cough whatsoever, starting to vomit. And it was quite interesting because I remember at that point in time, there were probably about 40 of us in the room. And amongst the 40 of us, I recall that perhaps only about three, two or three participants, or maybe three or four, just a handful of participants, had known this master before and had went for her causes. The rest of them were all strangers. But the number of puking sounds and all that that I heard in the room were definitely more than a handful. So I was like, okay, even if this was a show, hmm, the actors, the number of people who are having the reaction is more than the number of people that I thought were in the master's inner circle. So seems unlikely. I didn't feel much during the negative energy detox session, but there was one point where I actually teared up, you know, just, I don't know, an emotion just overcame me and I just teared up, cried. So of course, my logical mind back then thought that, hmm, maybe, of course, being skeptical because all the while, I was a typical Singaporean student, you know, like, very academic, scored very well for my exams, went to university, goes through a straight path. So very logical, analytical mind. So I just thought to myself, hmm, maybe it's just a transition in the music, this music more touching, so I cried, <laughs> okay? 
But of course, after letting out those emotions, I definitely felt lighter. Okay. Second part was where the magic happened. Second part was where we've already cleansed the cup, right? We've already removed the negative energies. Now it's refilling us, the vessel, with positive energies. So this session was standing up. Likewise, uh, lights were dimmed, another set of background music was playing, and throughout all these sessions, the master always said that, you know, all of you just relax, whatever emotions you have, whatever, just let it flow up. Yeah, don't control yourself, don't control your thinking, don't control your actions. So same, I just stood there and I just relaxed, tried to empty my mind, I just chill out. And then all of a sudden, a while in, I started to feel myself rocking back and forth. Okay, like back and forth, very slowly. And then after that, I went clockwise, like this, standing up. Okay, I have a video, you can have a look at it. So that's where I was like, whoa, I know that this master can move energies and she does energy work, but now I'm actually feeling it tangibly. You know, like definitely there wasn't anyone moving me, otherwise I would have felt it. I was moving by myself. There weren't any strings attached to the wall and attached to me and I'm moving like a puppet. I was moving by myself. So, and I remember when I was young, my dad also does qi gong. So whenever he's in his qi gong meditation, he also does have all this shaking and oscillating movement. So I drew a bit of connection because Qi is also a form of energy, right? And there's a linkage. So likewise now, I imagine it as the energy around me circulating, moving, and so on. I was moving along with it. So at the point, I was very soaked. You know, like from skeptical mind, you experience it already. Like once you experience it yourself, there is no way you can be skeptical, right? So I really felt energy tangibly. And I was like, whoa. Okay, I know this master does energy work, but now I'm actually feeling it very tangibly. You know, so okay, she's 100% legit, definitely. I can feel it. And so after the whole, this whole entire negative energy detox program, um, of course, they had this offer where, hey, if any of you want to uh, see the spiritual teacher, you can find her for a paid consultation, whereby she does like a live reading for you. So me and another colleague of mine, without hesitation, we sign up for it. Yeah, because we wanted to know what she has to say about our future, you know, what we can avoid, how can we improve. Of course, we actually didn't know what to expect at the point in time, but we we're just curious to learn more about our future. So that was probably a few days later, we went to consult her for this live reading. And I remember at that point in time, the more I stepped into the room for the consultation, like the few seconds while I was sitting down, she already started to share, you know. Very quickly, she didn't have to look at the paper and analyze my parts and all that. She just started sharing about me, my personality, why am I facing roadblocks, what's my future potential, how can I improve. So a few key things that she shared that maybe I can share here which was a bit interesting. So firstly, she gave me an image makeover advice. She told me that your hair, because back then my hair was very, my fringe was like spiking up. It's very high up. So she said that, no, in Chinese, she called it, that means your hair don't be so standing up. Comb it by the side. So a bit like my current hairstyle. Comb it to the side. And your spectacles, because at that point in time, I was, I was wearing those kind of thinner rectangular frame spectacles. So she said, change it to something that is of a bigger frame. Okay? With something that is white by the sides or something that is red by the side. And she said that, don't wear dark colors because at that point, I was wearing a t-shirt. I was wearing a t-shirt, dark blue t-shirt. So she said, don't wear dark colors because you won't be able to bring out your aura. But instead, you should wear white specifically for that year. It's white, light green, and light blue. Yeah, of course, all these colors, in my particular context, it was to help me, and this whole image makeover is to help me to boost my aura, to bring out that aura within so that I can have the kind of aura and feel when I meet other people. Because... I was doing sales at a point in time. I need to carry the aura with me so that I can attract connections and be more presentable in the feeling kind of sense. So um, that was the advice she gave me. So I, I changed very quickly. Like the next day I went to buy a new specs whatsoever. And then uh, you know, I remember when I was in the office that day, most of my colleagues couldn't recognize me because of these new specs. Yeah, but they all agreed that, wow, you know, definitely brought out just a very different feel feels better kind of thing. So that is one thing that 
um, Masu Lucia does. Of course, this whole image consulting thing of hers, usually it's a separate consultation service altogether. But I guess sometimes she sees based on the person, you know, um, if she feels like she needs to mention it, I don't know, maybe because she feels that you have the potential or she just likes you or she feels that something very pressing, then she'll just share it as part of the normal consultation. Although uh, on a default basis, it's not part of that regular consultation package. So that was one. And of course, back then, I my dressing was I like to wear the t-shirt and then I wore like a neck pendant around me. So she said, you know, don't don't wear this kind of style. Yeah, just wear office wear, you know, look more professional. And of course, it really helped me a lot with my image. And second thing that she told me was that she said that everything about me was good. You know, I was very hardworking. I like to learn um, the way I That means like the way I am as a person in terms of like human relations and how I do things is all very good. It's just that I'm low in luck. And so although I work very hard, but my results are not proportionate to the effort that I put in. So maybe some people, they work less hard, but they get more results. In this case, they get more sales, which over the years I've observed, which is very true, you know, uh, some of my peers, they are around my age, but they're able to connect to like higher net worth clients. Although we might be around the same age, some even younger, you know, some just slightly older, one or two years, but they're able to connect to higher net worth and they have more sales and they just are able to attract more connections around them. Whereas I've always struggled with connections, keeping them. And at a point in time, I basically had zero, you know, high net worth connections. The connections around me were all people of like my age group or younger, mostly. And I did observe that although I set more appointments than them, but the sales that I closed was always lesser. You know, of course, I'm not someone to compare. I always felt that everyone has their time and place. So this is just me. But when she shared that it was because I was low in luck, I was like, okay, now it makes sense. Yeah, and she went on to elaborate that why you're low in luck is because your energy levels are low. When your energy is low, your luck is low. Yeah. So of course, later on, I understood it as the energy I can use is like a magnet. When our magnetic field is very weak, then when this us is a magnet, okay, firstly, we attract things that are like us. So when we are positive, when this field is positive, we attract positive things to us, positive people, opportunities, events, whatsoever. Of course, when this field is negative, just like people who have depression, whatsoever, then they tend to attract all the bad stuff. That's why some people, they're just always unlucky. They always got bad people around them trying to sabotage them or whatsoever. And yeah, you know. So firstly, the polarity of our energy field has to be positive. Then can we attract positive things to us? And secondly, the magnitude of this magnetic field also has to be very strong. Even if your polarity is positive, for example. But if the field, the strength of the field is very weak, then you basically can't attract much good stuff either. Yeah, this is also why later on I got to learn from my spiritual teacher that some people, although they are very talented, very intelligent, very good person, very kind, but they just don't have a lot of good conditions going for them. You know, they are their job position doesn't match up to their talents, their character, you know, the kind of connections they attract. Like their level of success just isn't on par with their innate qualities. Yeah, and that is because their energy field is very weak. So that was kind of my case, which explains it. So she said that if you want to improve this situation, you have to find someone, you have to find like a master to help you change your energy field. So at the point in time, I was quite new to all these concepts, okay? But I, I roughly understood that, okay, my issue is that I have low luck because I have this thing called low energy. I didn't understand it really in depth at the point in time. So I knew that I wanted to fix this low luck issue, this low energy issue. Of course, uh, Masaru is always someone who, it's your first time seeing her, she won't, She's not someone who will hard sell people. Yeah. So she won't she won't insist or she won't even recommend that, oh you can find me. You know, she just put it up very openly that you can find any master to to improve energy feel your luck for you. So of course in my mind, logical brain, you know, these kind of masters there's a lot of them out there. Some of them are not legit. So how can I trust? Of course I trust you because I've experienced the sessions I went for with you, the negative energy talks and now your life reading is so accurate. So definitely if I do anything that is going to be changing my luck, improving my energy for you, I will definitely do it with you, right? So that's where I asked her, you know, I, I think I asked like 
two times. Then she told me, okay, if you really want to, then um, how she does it is that to boost your energy levels and so your luck, she does this thing called an energy ritual where you see, because I was low in energy, right? This energy level is low. And so I can't attract that level of opportunities, connections to me. So I need that. I need more energy to reach this point so that I can attract the kind of connections and opportunities that I want. And another thing that made me want to do it at that point was because my company was going through a very critical phase of growth. So I didn't want to, because of my own low energies whatsoever, affect my sales performance. You know, I wanted to perform as well as I can in my sales. And of course, she also shared that. At the point in time, I was already leading a team of people, right? I was like a team lead. So my team had about 20 people back then. So she said that if your energy field doesn't improve, then eventually, very quickly, some of these people, they'll start to rebel, they'll start to leave, there'll start to be some dissonance in the team. So later on, got to know that high energies are also a very important trait for leaders because when a leader's energy field is too weak, then this energy field can't contain these leader's followers or these leader's people. So energy field needs to be strong, then he can control the people and contain the crowd. Yeah, that is why leaders with too weak energy field, there's a lot of scenarios that happen whereby their employees leave them very easily, their employees always rebel, you know, always have differing voices, always fight back against them because the energy field is not able to press them down. But people with very strong energy fields, like for example, our founding father of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew, his energy field was very strong. So I'm sure people are familiar with how there was one period where the SIA workers went on a strike. So Lee Kuan Yew just went up there and gave them one time to go and just F them up. And all of them just became scared and, you know, timidly went back home with the tail between their, their feet. <laughs> right? Because his energy field was very strong. can contain the whole entire crowd. Yeah. It can make Singaporeans listen to him. It can make the whole entire nation listen to him because his energy field is very strong. So when Lee Kuan Yew passed on, uh, his eldest son, Lee Sien Long, who eventually took the position of Prime Minister, his energy field isn't as strong. It's still strong, definitely. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to bring Singapore to or maintain Singapore's current state of prosperity and, you know, uh, national peace whatsoever. But because his energy field is weaker and so he's not able to contain as well, you know, like his siblings, the family, right? Some of the family members started to just rebel against him because his own energy field isn't strong enough to contain his siblings. Uh, when the father was there, his energy field could hold everyone together. Yeah, but when the father is gone, yeah, it just couldn't happen that way. So, likewise, on a deeper level, that was what she also meant when, of course, later on, I understood all this uh, theory. When I was at a point in time at the consultation, I didn't know all this yet. So, that was also why she said that if your energy level doesn't improve, then people will slowly start to leave you because your energy field is not able to contain them, not able to continue to magnet them to you, which, of course, I didn't want that. So, I asked her, you know, this energy ritual, how to go about it? How much is it? And at that point in time, she quoted me $5,800. So all these energy rituals are very specific, very spiritual in nature because it's an energy exchange. Like how much energy I need in order to reach that state of growth that I needed and wanted to unlock my potential up to that, that point. So later on, what I got to learn is that karma is also a form of energy. Generally, a lot of successful people, it's either they have a lot of good karma that they carry on from their past lives because maybe in their past lives they did a lot of good and so this life they all have very large karma balance and so this karma balance is a form of energy balance and think of it as our bank balance just like how when we have a higher bank balance we can exchange for more material goods whatsoever when we have a higher karma balance aka a higher energy positive energy balance we can convert it into more material wealth so it's like higher karma balance translates into higher material wealth which then translates of course to more material goods that you can buy in that earlier example. So another way that successful people go to where they are is because of the good karma that their ancestors, their family has accumulated. Like for example, their ancestors did a lot of good, did a lot of virtuous acts, their parents, and so the whole family accumulate all this good karma. And so this good karma translates to prosperity even for the future generations. That's why you can say as their second gen wealthy people, but the family has a lot of this karma balance, so they continue to be prosperous. Whereas some rich family are the opposite. You know, they always say that wealth cannot pass through three generations. Because why? This accumulated good karma balance in the whole entire family, in the generation, uh, isn't able to last the generations. Yeah, because maybe the second generations, they don't know these whole spiritual aspect of things. They just squander away the money. 
right? They spend the money. And because the money that you have is a result of the karma balance that you had, right? It's like an exchange. When you have $1 million, okay, if you spend $500,000 to buy a flat, then you have $500,000 less money in the bank account. So likewise, when you have more wealth and when you keep spending wealth on material stuff, then actually indirectly, you're minusing off this karma balance that you once had. Or maybe not even you, like I mentioned earlier, your family had. So when there isn't a replenishment, just like how when you don't save money in the bank account, then eventually this karma balance is going to deplete. And once it depletes to a low level, that's where these so-called rich families, they start to just go on a decline, yeah, which is what happens most of the time. Those families that continue to remain rich throughout the generations is because these values, these spiritual cultivation as well, things are passed down. And so their kids, you know, they know how to do good things, do charity, be a good person, and so continue to accumulate this good karma, and so keep the prosperity in the family. So how does one become rich, become successful? They can go through the so-called general way of slowly cultivating spiritually, you know, becoming a good person, go to your church, go to your temple, do more charitable acts, uh, just have a good personality, just be a good person. And then you slowly accumulate this good karma balance, which tra then translates to a good energy field, which then translates to you being able to attract more opportunities and connections to you. Just like how people who are kind, one look, you can actually just feel that they're just a nice person and good person and you can trust them. Those people who are cunning whatsoever, you can just tell from the look on their faces. Agree? So, likewise, in my case, I was lacking in that amount of energies. So, it's either I slowly cultivate myself, <laughs> right, going through the long way, doing good whatsoever, but of course, in the process, it's a longer process. Or, I can just spend money to so-called buy this energy that I need to propel myself to a greater height. Yeah, so it's always an energy exchange. It's either you exchange time, your time, you know, going through a longer process to accumulate up to that level, or if you have money, you just use money to straight away buy that amount of energy and go up to that, to that level. Just like how rich people who have already an existing base of capital, they can use money to grow more money. Things get go faster for them. For those of us who are just the average person, we don't have that base capital to start with, then we have to slowly exchange our time and effort for money, so it's a longer route. In essence, in terms of this spiritual energy aspect, I went through the so-called rich person route, aka I bought, bought energy. So at a point in time, Master Lu only does energy rituals in person. So when I said, I want to do it, 5008, let me do it. And bear in mind, it was like my first time really knowing her. But of course I had a faith. Why? Because of these past experiences that I went through. So I couldn't do it when she was in Singapore, because a few days later, she would be flying back to China already. So if I wanted to do it, I had to fly all the way to China to do it. And I decided, let me just do it. Because the company's at a very, very critical stage of growth. I'm not going to wait till Master Lu is back in Singapore before I do this whole energy ritual. So I did it. Flew to China by myself. And of course, this story of mine, going to China by myself, first time knowing Master Lu, a young person, going to China by myself to see her, it became like a legendary story in her circle of people. Right? So I went to China... A uh, very interesting experience. Uh, I remember her office also doubled down as like a temple slash altar space. So of course, Master Lu, she doesn't represent any religion. To her, she deals with energy and frequencies. Even religious practices whatsoever, she understands and explains it from an energy point of view. right? So like for example, when the Taoists or the Buddhists, they offer jaws and whatsoever. Essentially, energetically, it is, this jaws is to establish a connection with the divine beings up there. Just like turning on our Wi-Fi so that we can connect to the satellite frequencies. And when we pray and give offerings whatsoever, it's essentially just a form of respect, you know, asking for help, right? And this help that this divine being gives us is essentially in the form of energies. So like I explained earlier, you need this help for this particular purpose so that interview can be smoother. Okay, I give you, if you are a worthy person, of course, just like a, it's just like a human interaction. If you are a screwed up person, why should I help you? If you're not sincere, why should I help you? Right? So think of our relationship with the divine beings, very similar to how uh, human relationships are like. You're a good person, I feel you're worthy, you've contributed to humanity whatsoever. Okay, let me just give you this bit of energy so that this energy can help you. Example, maybe boost your aura so that when you go for an interview, the person just likes you even more. It does stuff like that. So it, she deals with things from a energy aspect. Yeah. So in fact, for she has many followers and students, clients, from all faiths, all walks of life, all nationalities, 
you know, for those who are like Catholics, Christians, then she connects to like Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, and get energies from these divine beings to help these, you know, Catholic Christian clients with their particular energy issues. So, of course, in China, most people are Buddhist, Taoist, so she sets up this temple over there. Because at a point in time, energy and frequencies, even up to now, is still, a, I would say, a pretty new topic in the market. Not many people understand. But if you talk about oh, Buddhism, Christianity, Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, Buddha, okay, people understand it better. So she set up a temple for that purpose. Okay, but of course, the underlying thing is this temple serves as like a Wi-Fi router. It transmits the signal from the satellite okay, to the person so that they can receive that connection. AKA, is a, it serves as a medium to channel energy from the universe whatsoever, from these divine beings to the human being that wants to receive this energy for their particular purpose. So I went there, I remember I managed to make my way to the office and when I reached there, oh, it was such a nice place. Very zen, very Chinese style, definitely, because it was in China. Very zen, I remember I sat there for a couple of hours chatting with the master, her assistant, and there was another uh, person that was there who also went there to do an energy ritual to boost his career, luck, whatsoever. I remember sitting there for a while, I just started to feel very zen. You know, like just... It's the kind of state you're in where you're feeling very sleepy and drowsy, but minusing, but minus the sleepy and drowsy state. <laughs> if you can embody that feeling. So after that, they went on to say that, oh, there's a very strong energy for this space. So after a while, when you sit here, you just feel more calm and whatsoever. So very nice. Next day was when I did my energy withdrawal. Um, of course, back then, because I'm a Buddhist, right? So uh, I didn't know what to expect. So they just prepared. The energy ritual is kind of like a ritual per se. So because I, you can say that by default, my quote unquote ritual is like the Buddhist Taoist style. So they prepare offerings in those style, you know, like fruits, milk, whatsoever. So of course, every ritual, um, there's item list to prepare. Things like fruits, milk, and candles, whatsoever. Can okay. yeah, it's just energy ritual. She just did her thing. Yeah, doing the whole ritual. Of course, I didn't know what was going on because my eyes were closed. And uh, at a certain point, she just gave me simple instructions like, oh, say, say your name out loud three times, you know, stuff like that. And I remember the ritual was very quick. It was just like 10, 15 minutes, done. Yeah. So at the point, I was like, whoa, okay. So this is how the ritual works. Like, I didn't feel anything. You know, it's just very quick. Huh? Like, oh, that's, that's all, <laughs> you know. So of course, it's like, oh, wow, 5008, like that. Just like that, you know. So, of course, that's just on the surface because essentially the energy is really in me. And it takes a while for the energy to, firstly, of course, this is at this current point in time, 2022, where I understand how all these things work, which is most of us, we are not that spiritually advanced. So when we are given such a large amount of energy, it doesn't all go in one shot. You know, think of us as like a sponge, okay? And the energy like water. Right? It's just that this sponge don't absorb all the water in one shot. Yeah, it absorbs bit by bit because of our current level, our current capacity. So there's a follow-up homework that I had to do when I went back to Singapore, which was to meditate for, I think, nine days straight for at least half an hour each day, uh, lighting up the two candles. So that exercise is to help me consolidate the energy that was given to me during the ritual into my body so that I fully, it's fully compressed inside of me, you know. So, okay, never mind, after the ritual, felt normal. Uh, but, okay, this is where the changes happen. I remember that night, I mean, it was a very short trip. I went there for like two days only. And um, at the end of the two days, I mean, the second day was my ritual. So after the night of the ritual, after the ritual was done, you know, they just invited me over for dinner, right? To just like celebrate, welcome me here to China whatsoever. And I remember my flight the next day was like 7 a.m. in the morning or something, just early. So I had to leave the hotel at about like 2 ish a.m. because I have to take a cab to the train station and then take the train, which is like one or two hours to the airport, you know, stuff like that. So it takes a while. And of course, you have to be at the airport like two hours earlier and stuff like that, right? Standard procedure. So I remember that night, we had a dinner, went back to the hotel, it was like 11 p.m. You can say that I barely had any sleep. Of course, I tried to sleep. So prior to doing all this energy work, my energy state was 
as such, whereby so doing a before and after comparison. So I used to be someone who have has to sleep like at least eight hours a night. You know, seven seven hours at that point was still a little bit little, right? Eight hours is a good balance. Sometimes I even go up to nine hours. But if I do anything less than that, if I do six hours, I can maybe just scrape by for one day. If I do six hours, two days consecutively, I would die like on the second day, you know. That's how bad I was. And if I have like three hours of sleep, needless to say, I'll be a walking zombie the next day. I wouldn't die, but I'll be a walking zombie. Yeah, if I have no sleep, then no mention. Uh, and sometimes, even though I sleep eight, eight nine hours a day, the next day I'll still wake up feeling a bit groggy, you know, like uh, something is just a miss. You know what I mean? Of course, I later got to learn that that's because of my low energy state. And at a point in time, because I was doing sales, so I meet clients every single day and stuff. So I remember, like, I think five meeting five people was the max i could go yeah after meeting five people i'll just be punctured like gone all the energy levels used up so that was me before that so that night three hours of sleep in fact i didn't really sleep much because i didn't even go into deep sleep it was just like light sleep close my eyes you know whilst you're aware of what's going on took the cab took the train it was early in the morning like 3 4 a.m and remember at that point in the train i was really wide awake for some reason and I was quite surprised because if I don't have that level of sleep in the night before, usually I will be just tired like a walking zombie, you know. But at the point in time, let me share with you how clear-headed I was. It's as if you drank coffee, but without all the side effects and like the jitters and stuff like that. My mind, my head was just clear, my mind was clear, my attention was just 100%. Just like, whoa, is this energy. And the next few nights, I basically only slept by about six hours per night. First time in my life. A few days in a row, I think three, three days in a row. And I woke up the next day still functioning super well. So that was one. The second most obvious benefit I experienced was a very quick rise in my confidence level. Because at that point in time, um, I was also helping the company closing big ticket items, so-called you know, 10,000 US dollars and above. So I had to reach out to that level of connections who has that kind of money. You know, so at that point in time, because the network around me were all young people. So I had to ask for my friends, you know, talk to their parents, and maybe get their parents' referral or the parents themselves are interested to buy in, then they just come in, these bigger deals. So I remember prior to doing this energy withdrawal, when I meet these people who are older folks, like my friends' parents, right? They're not even like a huge business magnate or something, just like older folks. I would feel very intimidated for some reason, although I knew the product knowledge at the tip of my fingers, but when I met them, I just felt this lack of confidence. I just felt intimidated for some reason. I later on got to know that this is because of energy difference. Yeah, when someone's energy levels are higher than yours, they are the alpha in a conversation and interaction, and you're the beta, vice versa. So when you happen to talk to someone, and you find yourself listening to them, like just subconsciously, you just agree with them and you listen to them and you just trust them, then likely their energy levels are higher than yours. Just like how Lee Kuan Yew, because his energy level is so high, whatever he say, people listen obediently. Yeah, no, no dissonance. Any dissonance also very quickly st stamped out. So because at that point in time, my energy levels were low, so even though I might meet people who are just slightly older than me, or maybe people on the same age, I might still feel intimidated because en their energy levels are higher relative to mine. And so I don't have control, I don't have, ener I don't have energetic control over the conversation. So when I came back, one of the most drastic differences I realized was my ability to control the conversation. When I met these older folks now, because I had a higher energy level, I felt the power. Yeah, I felt the power in a way over them energetically. Like I could control, I could manage the conversation. And naturally that resulted in a rise in confidence. When I met people, I was more confident, you know, just naturally more confident. And now needless to say, I'm doing all these videos, I'm sharing things on social media, like there's no fear at all. And talking about confidence, back then when I first started my sales career, I even had a fear texting people, trying to set appointments to text. I even feared that at that point in time. Now, I can send a text without thinking, right? There's no fear at all. Now, I'm not saying that you should send a text without thinking twice, but there's generally no hesitation in sending a text, let alone doing a video, putting myself out there on social media, doing public speaking. So public speaking was one of the the main things that I noticed, the difference as well. Because at that point in time, uh, in, that, in that phase of the company, I was doing a lot of public speaking, presenting the company to 
the potential buyers. So crowds of like always 50, 50 to 100. And I remember back then, even as an MC or whenever I'm just on stage, I just feel that I don't have control over the crowd. Although I've memorized what I have to say, but no more I stand up there, I'm just intimidated. Because the period was so close apart, right? It's not like, oh, I did my last public speaking one year before I did the energy ritual, and then the next one is like six months later after the energy ritual. It was just like back to back. Maybe it's like the week before I did the energy ritual, I was really, I was really doing a public speaking session. Then the week after that, I was doing another one. I could feel the drastic difference. I had a better ability. Again, it's down to energy levels. When your energy levels are much stronger, right, relative to the audiences, you're able to press down the crowd and control the crowd. Yeah. And this translates to better stage navigation, even better impromptu speaking abilities, better ability to hold your ground when you're doing public speaking. And that was what I felt. Yeah. Before that, not just talking about public speaking in front of strangers, even like team meetings in front of my teammates, the 20 plus of them. Sometimes, even though I know what I want to say, but when I'm in front of these 20 plus of them, I just feel somehow something's lacking in me. The closest analogy I can give is like, you go to the gym, although you've eaten food, right? But because you have a sugar crash, although there's food in your system, but you because of the sugar crash, you just don't have energy to just <laughs> push the weight up. So I was in that similar position. I got to content everything in me. I've eaten all these so-called, but I just don't have the energy to exude it out. Yeah. So after the retro, all these changed 180 degrees. I could, I could just navigate the whole entire meeting very well. Yeah, the whole aura, everything improved. So that's another one. And of course, I could afford to sleep lesser. Yeah, even these days, although it's not recommended, you know, sleeping four or five hours, but I, I can get by with four or five hours of sleep. Yeah, I don't do it every day, just once in a while when I really have to, when I'm really busy. And the next day, I'll still function normally. Yeah, six, seven hours, no problem. Even last time, six, seven hours could be a stretch. The closest analogy I can give, or like if you want something to just understand how it feels like, is two analogies okay first is imagine when you know the first time when you're dating the person that you you love right um you can stay up late and just text one another and next morning you still have a lot of energy to just carry on your work because you're so pumped by this like emotional relationship so that state okay minus the lovey lovey part that state of being very awake and energetic is how i function even up to now like almost every single day yeah just a peak state almost all the time so before that, these peak states were very rare to come by. Yeah. Or another analogy is when you're very motivated. So imagine today you set a goal for yourself to hit 10,000 a month. Yeah. And then you actually now are very close to hitting that goal. So you have that motivation to drive every single day. Like, wow, I know when you wake up, you feel so invigorated. So that invigorating feeling was my default state. And over the years, another thing that I noticed that changed within me was a lot of wisdom started coming into me. Yeah. Or perhaps it was really inside of me. Like when I go through a situation, I go through a difficulty, maybe I face some difficult customers, I face some difficult situation, automatically a wisdom will come into me that make me see the situation from a positive and empowering perspective, which also helps me to make a more empowering decision, which then leads to a more empowering outcome. And yeah, I just got a lot of, a lot of lessons, a lot of wisdom just came to me every time I face a person, every time I face a situation. Yeah, so that was one of the very... That's why now... If you consume my content anywhere and you have heard me spoke before, you will uh, you probably agree that I don't sound like someone my age. I'm only 27 years old this year as of the time this podcast, this video was being made. 27 years old. People will think that you don't talk like a 27 year old. You don't carry yourself like a 27 year old. Yeah, so that's because of all this wisdom that's being unlocked. And what I got to understand is that inside our subconscious mind contains a lot of this wisdom. Right, because the subconscious mind is like a computer. It's like a computer that's been around with you for ages. Every lifetime, whatever you experience, the lessons that you've learned, is stored inside of this computer. So even until this lifetime, all this information is actually there, somewhere deep inside you. It's just that it's locked away, you don't have access to it. So how do you regain access to it? That's where energy comes in. When a person has a very high energy levels, or in my case, the energy was given to me, it kind of opens up my subconscious mind. It kind of, the energy kind of unlocks this subconscious mind potential within me and all the wisdom inside there, all the energy inside there just starts to flow out. Yeah, and not, so I start to become a much more mature person and stuff like that. An analogy that can help you is to think of it as like a car and fuel. When a car doesn't have fuel, which is the energy source, then it cannot move. It is very slow. It is dormant, stagnating there. But when there's fuel, 
then the engine can start to move. It starts to trigger and starts to move. And so it starts to unlock. And so the vehicle is able to move now because it has power. The last thing that, I wouldn't say the last thing that a lot, but another more significant thing is the growth in my connections and abilities. Okay, talking about abilities. I also found it, as the years goes by, because every year now, I do at least one energy boosting session with my spiritual teacher, with Master Lucia. So as the years goes by, I realized that my ability to pick up things starts to become quicker. My speed of learning becomes quicker. My speed of being able to analyze things and perceive things becomes quicker as well. And of course, what I wanted to say earlier was that because this magnetic field, this energy field of mine becomes stronger. So I start to magnet higher level connections into my life. So I have observed myself from the past few years. From 2018, the predominant network around me were people my age, younger. When it came to 2019, first half of 2019, I started to attract connections were, who were a, slight, a little bit wealthier, people who had more financial power, and people who were older than me, like late 20s, early 30s kind of connections. And towards the second half of 2019, I started to enter the circle of connections who were, in a way you can say, firstly, they were much older, like 50, 60 years old kind. Those people who are like, you know, used to be senior management in their companies, they, they are running businesses, uh, not say huge time businesses, but they do have, of course, their financial capital. So that was second half of 2019. And basically 2020 started to go even more deep into the circle of business owners, like people who are running businesses and they're already successful, multi-millionaires kind of thing. And 2021, likewise, continued to grow one inch up, you know, multi-millionaire circle. And 2022, I would say that I entered the circle of people who are in that 100 million net worth range. Yeah. So years goes by, I just see the level of circle of connections I managed to go into just increases in net worth. And a lot of times, these connections just come, you know. It's not even like I approach them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. During the early years, because I was out there hunting, getting for sales, I had to approach them. Yeah. But um, as the years goes by, a lot more of such people, they end up approaching me, you know. Like, for anything, like some of them, they are looking to get someone as a, like a general manager role in their company. They approach me, hey, are you open to this role? Are you interested in this role? So I get a lot of all these job offers, you know, opportunities. People want to offer me business opportunities, job opportunities. It just come to me. I don't have to look for it. Yeah. How can we explain it energetically? Because my energy field has strengthened. So I magnet all these opportunities and connections to me. So that's why I always tell my parents and people around me, uh, you know, it's not that I don't want to look for a job or I can't find a job. Yeah, jobs are really available for me. I don't even have to look for them. Yeah, if I just will wait, you know, I just put up my hand. Okay, I'm I'm open to work a job right now. Someone will offer me something. Again, it's not to brag, but it's to share the importance of having high energy levels. Two persons of the same talent. One person has a very high energy level. One person has a low energy level. This low energy level person definitely have to submit a lot of resumes. Have to keep hunting, keep hunting, and maybe. Their outcome is just the regular standard percentage. Oh, you know, out of every 20 resumes, they get one job offer kind of thing. Yeah. The person who has high energy level, same qualification, same amount of talents whatsoever, he doesn't even need to do perhaps even anything. The opportunity just comes to him. He might even just get into a senior role in that company. Yeah. Although the same talent. So we do hear stories like that. Hey, this person, how come, you know, although his qualification is lesser than mine or he's less talented, he's less smart. Hey, he's just a normal person, right? I think I'm better than him. But how come he's able to get into the higher management position? Because the energy level are stronger. So they are able to attract the higher level connection, high level opportunities that's on par with the energy level. Although you have the talents and skills or the hard skills, but the energy level is lower, so you just can't enter that circle. So those are just some of the many experiences that I've experienced after knowing my spiritual teacher. And that's on a personal level. There's a lot more stories. I will share up to this point of how this very initial energy ritual actually helped me. There are a lot more other energy rituals I did over the years, so I'll share in subsequent podcasts. But yeah, this is what I wanted to share for this very first episode, documenting it. Hope it answers some of your questions on how I met my spiritual teacher, what made me believe in her because she has the real ability. It works, period. Stay tuned for the next episode. I will share more stories, continuing from the year 2018.